It's freaking cold. What is this? 25 degrees. It's been this cold since I was a kid. I tell you, it's a trip. Well, for anyone that hasn't understood it, happy fucking New Year. I'm going to say something. This is just my own personal belief. I think it comes from living the life of design, living the life of intent. I don't really care about holidays in the same vein that other people do because every day is a holiday for me. And sometimes I forget that many people don't have control of their time, really control of their lives. They just don't. And that's why Friday night and Saturday night, they lose their minds. So anyway, happy freaking new year to you. I was talking to one of my clients. And this is um, someone we, we've actually almost fired this person. I think this person almost fired me because we've just gotten into it quite a bit. But for some reason, we're both hanging on. I believe people can change. Many people have the assumption that when you reach a certain age, you are fixed to a degree that's true. If the person, regardless of their age, wants to change, they can. And there's another thing that happens frequently, but people don't really see it. You have the ability to change other people. Usually it's done in the negative. Say, you know, go from a romantic standpoint. You meet someone, they're open, they're not really afraid of being hurt, then uh, shank the heart. Next thing you know, they become a little scared, a little bitch. That, my friends, is called change. You've changed how another person reacts and responds to other people. That's, called, that's facilitating change. And that happens when someone usually treats someone very badly. Or it just, you know, sometimes it just happens. Another way that you can change people, and I, I really strongly encourage you to do this. Next time you're out and you got a little extra change, pay for someone's meal. Don't say, don't just like, hey, you know, happy uh, Monday, I got you, throw the money down, walk away. That person will be in a good mood for the rest of the day. Maybe even the rest of the week because we have become a nation of self-involved, self-absorbed people that anytime that you do something that's outside of that arc, it opens people up. Seriously. And the reason I'm mentioning that, someone I paid for their uh, lunch, I don't know when, it was years ago, I was in Target. And this girl, hey, how you doing? And I'm just like, hello. Because she was just, there was so much energy. Like, And I was like, I don't know you. She's like, you remember we were at the um, Flying Biscuit and you paid for my... And I was like, I do stuff like that. But honestly, I don't remember because I just kind of like do it and dip. She said, that's what you did. That's what you did. And uh, I just want, and I mean, you know, she just went on and she was just like, hey, how you, you know, just talking. She remembered that from years ago because people don't do a lot of nice things for strangers. You know, you might open up the doors of your heart and your wallet to your friends and family, but for strangers, that doesn't really go out there. Um, that's one of the reasons, and if you didn't get it, links below, that I'm giving away my audio book, Pimping, you know, The Hustler Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Because in terms of energy, the more good energy, and understand, do not mistake this for karma. If you think you do something bad and something bad is going to happen to you, you're foolish. I see too much evil, too many things in the world, and don't give me that, well, you know, you don't know what God has for, no, 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 no. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't like, it doesn't work like that. You know, the laws of the universe don't give a damn if you're good or evil. They really don't. So, but for you in creating your own life of intent and your own life of design, the more positive, amplified, and good energy you put out there, because it's a refractor deal, it's like a reflector. You put it out there and it reflects back to you. So the more you put out, the more that you're actually going to get back in. And that's one of the reasons I decided to get a book away and it's going to be perpetually free. And 
you know, going back to the client that prompted this video. You can't change people. Yes, you can. You can change people. You can change people all day long. And it's really very simple. You change how you respond to them. That's it. You change how you respond to them. I was dating this angry black woman. <laughs> and she had a particularly pissy day and she was full of and just and I had this wonderful month. It was my first month as a contract office furniture salesperson. I still get in my draw, made some nice contacts, a lot of good stuff was going on. So my happiness cup was just, I, I don't even have a happiness cup. I had a happiness uh, vessel. I had a happiness hamper that was just overflowing with happiness. And she just kept putting out all that, rrr, rrr. and my happiness was just like, you know, the Incredible Hulk. Every time she put up a, rrr, the happiness Incredible Hulk went, boop, and knocked it down. I mean, essentially, her bad attitude really didn't phase me. And that's why if you have someone who's always doing shit and always creating drama, it's because they're a very unhappy person. So she's at my place, you know, and it's, and then my happiness, Incredible Hulk, is just kicking all that ass. Then she says something that's particularly foul. And my happiness, Incredible Hulk, hit both fists and went, boom, knocked that shit down, right? And uh, I was like, apparently you're not feeling well. I'm gonna go in the kitchen and fix you some tea. And she just looked at me like. So I'm going to the kitchen, fixing the tea, and in my mind I'm like, man, maybe she needs to go home because there's clearly something going on and I am not the reason. So she comes in the kitchen, she's crying. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Never had another problem out of her in you know the whole time we did it because she was predicated and geared for anger uh, responses of attacks and when she didn't get that she had no she had no fuel for her unhappiness fight she had no fuel so just doing something like that can change a person and how they relate to you not necessarily change how they relate to everyone else but how they relate to you. So we're talking, we're going back and forth because that's one of the reasons I put up the, if you know, if you want to change your hustle, you got to change you because it's easier to change you than to change the world. And we just go back and forth and like, you know, I'm, I'm really feeling like I'm not giving you any benefit because you are not taking my recommendations. And if you don't take my recommendations, you're wasting your money and my time. So we had this last, you know, we're going at it, going at it, going at it. And he 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 kind of came to the good side, and he said, "Well, I did what you said this morning, and uh, it went very well. It went very very well." So I was like, "Ah, so you're doing the recommendations? You're you're, you're listening to me, right?" And he said, and, and begrudgingly, he's like, "Yeah, but see, this is something else." with changing people and changing yourself. You have to let go of false narratives, negative narratives. You have to let go. So when you're trying to change someone else, you're also changing yourself. And that gets scary because your current behavior patterns are what make you you. And if you let them go, you're no longer you. So who the fuck do you become? And that's a very scary space for a person that doesn't know how to plan, doesn't have dreams, has kind of given up on certain aspects of life. So it's very, very fucking scary. Essentially, it's uh, dancing with the devil that you know versus kissing the angel you never met. It's that type of situation. So he's, he's, he's like coming along, right? He's, he, it's just really, really hard. And I was like, okay, we made progress. And I, I just said this, I'm going to keep you as a client. He's like, you know, he said, that's mighty fucking fantastic for you. And I was like, yeah, I know. We have that type of relationship. And I started to feel better. 
I started to feel better about the situation because in the effort of changing you, changing yourself, changing other people, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a certain mindset. It takes um, looking at life from a different vantage point. And it's really, really hard if you do not believe in the big life. And, you know, just really quick, I'll go into this more in 2014. The big life is that perfect life that you envision. And many people haven't envisioned their big life. They've envisioned the life of others. Like, I'm going to get a big house. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. These, it's kind of like the Italian job where the dude stole every, all the money. And instead of coming up with his own fantasies and dreams and objectives, he just stole everyone else's because he wasn't that imaginative. A lot of people are living the life they live in hate because they adopted the lifestyle that they were told that they should have versus sitting down and thinking, hmm, I can really create my own lifestyle. I really am the boss of me. I can make this happen. I could uh, do whatever I really want. Hmm. People have not thought about that in years and years ago. Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field opened my mind to that perspective because Earl's talking about follow the follower. You know, it'd be good if people were following the leader. That's someone who's innovative, someone with new concepts, someone with new energy. That's a different ball game. But really, it's follow the follower. And that's what a lot of people are doing because uh, someone put up in Hustle University from the Khan Academy the breakdown on how to decide if you need to buy a house. The common knowledge is, or the thought on the street is, everyone needs a house. When really, depending upon your dreams, desires, financial position, where you live, in relationship to rents or not rents, you may not need to buy a house and you may come out better emotionally and financially by not buying a house because people are not really thinking. So with living this big life is the one that you sat down and you came up with, with your own two little hands. You came up with it, no one else did. It's like, and then um, my big life of being a writer, a uh, content creator, I went, you know, I'll, I'll share with you. I went through hell that first year because so many people thought that I had fucked up on the massive scale of fucking up where you know one is really not that bad and 10 is incredibly bad i had fucked up to the hundredth power man i don't know why you like letting that storage auction thing go out man if it was me man if it was me well you know you've established with that and you know yeah you're sick and you know and so many people didn't understand but you know it was my big fucking life and you have to really own your life because other people will have you walking on a path that they designed for you because that's something they wanted and couldn't have and you may not even want that shit i see it every day and when you do your big life when you create your big life you got to be honest with yourself and this is part of the changing because if you really want to be truly effective as a hustler, an entrepreneur, anything that you want to be effective as, you currently are not going to be as effective as you can be in the future without changing yourself. It's not going to happen. Uh, there's someone that I follow. You know, if you're in the internet marketing space, you should follow this guy. His name is Derek Halpern. It's a website called Social Triggers. I've been following Derek for about two going on three years when he first came on youtube his videos were rough they were rough but the information and the content was solid and i'm not a person that sits there and belabors someone going well he ain't clean enough and he cusses and oh there's a type i'm not that person if the content if the information speaks to me i'm there you know, I don't look at all that other stuff. There's people I follow on YouTube that they put up a video that's like 30, 40 views, right? But the content is fucking awesome. And it feeds me. So I'm watching Derek. In the beginning, you know, don't take my word for it. Go to his YouTube channel, Social Triggers. Put it up there in the bar. And go to his first video. 
watch that one and then go to the latest video and you will see something called change you will see massive change he's taken uh, voice lessons he's gotten a stylist he's work he has done a lot of things to enhance his brand and he he's changed he's changed about I'm gonna say maybe 20% of who he was he's changed about 20 he's did a 20% change and the ch it was awesome you and that that's something else and this kind of goes back to social tribes if uh, you are thinking that you can be who you are and you don't have to change to get to the next level you are sadly fucking mistaken and you're deluding yourself I'll give you an example of that tribalism that is so stupid that even the great master uh, P had to change. He went out there, I'm on dancing with the stars, I'm dancing for my people, you know, and then uh, I forget his name. He was like, yeah, I'm here repping my people from Beverly Hills. I can't remember the dude's name, but shit was funny as hell. And he took that gold out of his mouth. He made sure that his son did not adopt that tribalism of the family tree and he changed himself and he went on and he went on and this was someone that was about it about it that dirt that, that gritty gritty this is who i am i ain't gonna never change it y'all that shit right and he changed if you are a self-respecting person capable of honest introspection honest introspection i tell you all the time one of the reasons i ended up in that fucking boarding house because i had a fucked up mentality it wasn't the world it wasn't my ex-wife it was my fucked up mentality and some poor ass choices and when i took the victim cape off and put the hero cape on and started being accountable for my actions accountable for my decisions my life changed as long as you're going, it ain't me, it's these other people. Oh, well, no, I'm, no, it's you. Because even if the other people are shanking you, even if they are doing shit wrong, how you respond to that event is on you. And it, it takes a lot of strength. I've had to deal with a lot of stuff in my short time here on this plane. And the thing is, as you go through those events that uh, shape you you get stronger you get much much stronger so understand you got a choice here you can accept <clears throat> embrace and facilitate personal change or you can keep going I'm not gonna change and the world needs to change to suit me who the fuck are you the world needs to change to suit your ass who the fuck are you it's never gonna happen there have been many people in history that have tried to, well, some actually did change the world, but more have failed than succeeded. It is a massive undertaking to change the world. You are easier off changing you to suit the world. And this is the cool thing about it. This is the cool thing. I want you to come closer. Listen, come closer, come closer. Once you change you and, you know, adopt this principle, don't hate the player, don't hate the fucking game, learn the fucking rules so you can win. When you get that, that down, you see the world totally differently. You see, you, you, you take the label of evil and bad, you start to look at what works and what doesn't work. When you get that type of clarity, the things that you can do with your life is amazing. It is amazing. So understand, you have a choice. Everything that you do is a choice. How you participate in this life is a choice. It is all a choice because the change is the only constant. And you're going to make good change because even when you're saying, well, this is the way that I am and I'm not changing, there's still gradual change. And usually it makes you worse. So you, you could be worse or better. Now, the quickest way to change other people is to change yourself. Change how you respond. So, going back to what I said earlier, this week, just go somewhere. It could be McDonald's, the 
restaurant, the venue, it does not matter. It can be a happy meal and you will still get the same mental money. You'll still get the same mental money. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this three-star, five-star restaurant. It could be McDonald's. It could be Chick-fil-A. It could be the Waffle. It could be any fucking where that people are putting food in their mouths. Seriously. Do it. Now, also, get out of your head that you can't change. Get out of your head that, you know, because you're 30, you're fucked beyond belief. That you're 40, you're fucked beyond, or you're 50. I have someone in my group who's 80 years old. 80 freaking years old. It was a scholarship. And um, she has made a lot of changes in the last eight months. She, 80 years old. So do not sell yourself short with the bullshit that, well, I can't change and the final chapter is written and this is all over and that is what I call your inner coward standing up on its tiptoes and roaring in your headspace. That's what I call it. I, I, you, you just, you dialed it in. You packed it in. You mailed it in. You said, fuck it. I'm giving the fuck up. You have to keep fighting. You have to keep fighting because I love this. And this is not my saying. I've heard it. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easy. I'm just going to tell you it's going to be worth it because I want you to think about it. This is the beginning of 2014. If you start making consistent and small steps to changing who you are as a person, you will be 180 degrees different this time next year than you are today. What does that mean? For you, it can mean you're doing better professionally. It could mean that you're not in a relationship and you end up getting married. It could mean that you have taken time off from your job or you started a business. For each person, that change, that goal, that big life is a different journey. You know, a lot of people want to do what I do. They want to uh, get on YouTube, talk to a lot of people, sell information products, and make money. And it may not be their path. I'm not going to dissuade anyone from doing it. What I'm going to say is, do you enjoy this shit? Does it make you happy to do a video? Do you love the emails you get from people that's like, man, this video, man, I needed that shit today. Do you get that kind of high? Because that's your currency. That's your mental money. The mental money comes first before the physical cash. And if you are not making mental money by the, you know, the bucket loads, by the, the wheelbarrow loads, by the dump truck loads, you're not going to make physical money at all. Because, you know, many people are doing this wrong because I love this shit. I love this shit. This is fun to me. To be driving around, running errands, looking at houses and shit, do a video, and then have people like that shit. That is fun. That is like, I get paid to play around. That's how I look at it. I get, play, I get paid to play around in my mental sandbox and share that information and part of my life journey part of the person I am as a child I was a voracious reader you know between first grade and high school and you know these are all not clearly 500 page books but I read maybe 4,000 books I was in the library checking out 10 20 books at a time and bringing them back in two or three days because I was a nerdy little child and no one would play with me. They wouldn't play. They wouldn't let me play with their reindeer games and shit. I was fucking Rudolph, the black-nosed reindeer. And instead of just sitting around and doing destructive shit, I read. And I read some more. And I read some more. And I learned that there were so many beautiful things in the world. And there was these countries and there was these people. And I went to some of those places. I went to those places. I was in Japan for six months. I was in South America. I was in Australia. I was just like, I got to go to these places that I read about in books as a child, as an adult, as a young man. So my journey was about communication and experiences from when I was a little pity grasshopper. So if you're trying to do this, and this ain't your passion, words, conversation, uh, presenting, reading, education, you're going to fail 
long term you might short term you might make a lot of money but long term you ain't gonna make it because it's not your journey and that's why i keep telling people in the hustle university find out what your shit is your shit is your shit because you know i it used to irk the shit out of me when people would copy me i mean people like copying my fonts copying how i did my channel page if i'm on spreecast the next thing you know they're on spreecast and like if you notice i give credit where credit's due I didn't know shit about Spreecraft until uh, Chris Green introduced me to it. I didn't know shit about it. That was his discovery. He's killing it. He's one of the recommended people. I have enough confidence in my shit to give the next man or the next woman their due versus trying to adopt it like a scared little bitch and then acting like I thought that shit up. You know, if I tell you something that came from Earl Nightingale, Earl Nightingale gets the credit. If I tell you something that came from Brian Tracy, I'm gonna tell you where I got it. If I read something in the book, I'm gonna show you. Irrational, you know, predictably irrational by Dan Arnold. I'm gonna show you my sources. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to know all this shit like some people do. And that's why they're gonna fail. You cannot go and live a life of intent, design, without integrity. It's not gonna happen. Because if you can't have integrity for yourself, you cannot have integrity for other people not gonna happen and you know part of this journey for me and I figured it out June of this year I'm doing this shit forever this is it there's no retirement you know in this type of occupation excuse me I could be 80 90 105 years old still doing this hey it's Glenda on YouTube it's 2078 yeah, I got, hey, you know what, I got some artificial legs today. I'm the fucking bionic man, yo. I mean, I see that shit because I continually increase my knowledge base. There's never been a period in my life where my knowledge base did not increase. Uh, the storage auction business was a massive knowledge dump into my mind of places, people, a little social scientist, a little archaeology. There was so many things. And that's why I can continue to make videos because my knowledge base is always increasing. Always increase your knowledge base. Always get more information. Cram as much shit into your noggin as you possibly can. That's the world we live in. We live in a knowledge worker world. You got to get that information. You have to do this. So, in parting, before we part ways, I want you to do this. Find someone, buy them lunch this week. I don't care who the fuck it is. I don't care if it's like, you know, Alf from that planet. I don't care. Buy someone fucking lunch. Say, hey, I got you. And dip. See what happens. All right. This is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side. Make sure that you get the free audio book, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. And also, check out Hustler University because there's a lot of shit that's going down and hustle you this month and next month and the month after and the month after and the month after uh the next six months are kind of schemed out already and i'm working on other stuff for the next six months because i am moving people away from just purely resale uh, this is just something i moved away from and i've been able to make a great living working from home for going on five years and not leave the house so i'm trying to bring people to that if you know doing whatever they're doing so that's what hustle use about getting you to that point if you so desire and with that buy someone fucking lunch i ain't playing i will come hunt you the fuck down don't do that shit right don't do it piss me off i'm coming for you i'm fucking coming for you and i'm bringing the big penis in the sky with you with me we coming for you all right g we coming for you we coming for you <laughs>